2100 Autolite carburetor, probably one of the most used carburetor systems in the world, in my opinion. Well, at least by Ford and AMC and International Harvester. There's a lot of companies that actually picked up and used this carburetor on their vehicles. And the two barrel is probably the most prolific. They have a 4100 as well, which we've covered in the past. But today I'm gonna go into this one and some of the idiosyncrasies on these carburetors, some little things that you might wanna know about, things that are coming out from the guys at National Parts Depot on this bad boy. And we're gonna probably start our tear down this week and then finish up our rebuild next week because I wanna clean the body up and all that. And I can't really do that with a can of Berryman's and a brush because I have a feeling the inside of this thing is gonna be pretty gnarly. But that's what I wanna show you guys this week. So we're gonna jump right off into this and pull the parts in that we got from National Parts Depot. Now what I did with these guys is I ordered pretty much everything they offer for, uh, for carburetor for the 2100. And right now I'm gonna show you this. This is their Walker fuel system repair kits. This is probably one of the most complete kits that you can get when you're doing the restoration on a carburetor. They come with pretty much everything you need in order to fix the carburetor. There is one thing that they don't include correctly, and it's just because that's how the kits have always come. Ford originally put a different power valve than the one that they offer in here, and I'll show you that in just a second. This kit comes with a, a seven, the power valve that you're gonna to want to get from National Parts Depot is an eight. I'll pop that to one side. I'm gonna pour out my bag of goodies. <laughs> the cool thing is, is how much stuff has come available for these carburetors now. We have, uh, this is a float, two different float systems available. They have the neoprene floats, which are pretty good with the uh, ethanol fuels, but you can also still get the brass floats. Either one of these will work, all of this stuff even the carburetor kit is set up to run with modern ethanol fuels. I say that's kind of theoretical because if the car sits up for any amount of time, I've found that even with all of that, like things like, for instance, your accelerator pumps will tend to start to get cracks and stuff in them over time from the ethanol fuels, even so. And I've got two of these here because you never know which one of these you're gonna need. Depends on the carburetor, which one you have. So I went ahead and ordered two of them because they're not that expensive to get. Um, oddly enough, even things like this, this is the two different carburetor stud sizes that Ford used on the 2100 and the 4100. It's gonna be a matter of whichever one you might need. And I won't be able to tell you that because it's gonna be to what type of air cleaner you're running on the car. So one's a little longer than the other and that's really, <laughs> that's really the big difference in them. And actually, it's not even, at this end of it, it's actually at the other end of it. So the inside of the carburetor, it's actually shorter. These jets are now available on a full range of sizes. For the longest time, you had to go and pirate these out of another car and get them now from National Parts Depot. Uh, cool thing is, idle adjustment needles, these are actually available now. You can still get these. these this is actually a Motorcraft part. All of us that are Ford guys that geek over new old stock parts, that's exactly what this is. And if I need them, I'm gonna throw them into the game. <laughs> now, this is the power valve we were talking about. This is a number eight, and I'll go into that in just a minute, what that means. It's crazy to me that this far down the road, there's this much stuff available. So I'm gonna pull the carburetor back in here, and we're gonna kinda go through this thing, little suit to nuts, and talk about all the idiosyncrasies on these carbs. All right, now the first thing I'm gonna tell you to do is to go to the hardware store and buy that. You're gonna need four shoulder bolts and eight nuts in order to do what we're gonna be doing today. Now you can buy expensive stuff from down at your favorite speed shop and pay lots of money, or you can spend like three bucks on bolts and nuts and do it this way. I prefer just saving the money. So we're gonna get these put on here and then we're gonna start tearing into this carburetor. The reason I'm doing this is it's a little easier to check things on a carburetor when it's on the stands like this. You wanna make sure the bolts are long enough that you can open the throttles on it, which on a two barrel, that's not a problem. Some of the bigger four barrels, it can be an issue. First things first, when you're doing a carburetor like this is diagnostics. You're gonna to wanna to know what you've got going on with the carburetor and what kind of condition this carburetor is in. So one of the first things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to try to do a full range of motion with the accelerator. I'm gonna look down my carburetor throats. This one actually has incredibly nice operation on it. The throttle is not sticky at all anywhere. 
throttle shaft doesn't exhibit really any wear. That's things you want to look at. And the reason you want to know about the throttle shaft wear on a carburetor like this is because that can become an air leak. If you have a carburetor on a car and the car is running, you can actually spray something like Gibbs oil or a penetrating oil down on the shaft assembly where it goes into the carburetor here and then also on the shaft assembly down here. If your idle picks up on a vacuum gauge, if your vacuum starts to get better or worse, depending on how you want to look at it, if the needle moves, that tells you you've got a real bad shaft assembly on here and you're probably going to want to have the carburetor rebuilt by somebody that can actually go in and fix that shaft problem for you. Uh, that's going to be kind of hard to find because these carburetors, there's some things available for them, but there's a lot of things that just plain aren't out there. Um, so I'm checked that out and that's really good. Now I want to show you something on here on the base plate system that is something that a lot of guys just pitch off into the trash. This is actually called a dash pot. A lot of guys don't even know what this thing is and what this basically is is when the carburetor is returning back to rest position on the throttles. You go out and you're driving around and you let go of the throttle. This is designed so that when the throttle is in the correct position, which this one is not, when the throttle is in the correct position on your carburetor, this is a way to soften the uh, shut of the carburetor on an automatic car so that the carburetor doesn't shut off. Because sometimes that could happen because of the automatic. The automatic sends a signal and it just goes, I don't know what I'm doing, and the car will just die. So Ford added this, oddly enough, General Motors part to their carburetors to, just, to cause that to not be an issue. National Parts Depot has got these uh, in the works right now. They're going to be coming out for the 2100, 4100. Not sure about the 4300 carburetor that Ford did, but you'll be able to get these to put on the carburetor to keep it from uh, causing an issue on an automatic. Next thing I'm going to look at is my accelerator pump here. Oddly enough, again, I don't know if it'll hold fuel. We'll know that in a minute, but the pump operation is actually pretty darn good. It's not causing a problem. Uh, spring tension on it's nice, so that's okay. The cool thing is that this carburetor actually has the original tag on it. Now, I've seen them bent this way. I've also seen them laid flat over the top of the carburetor body right here. But this gives you everything you need to know when you're ordering a carburetor kit for your car. This one is a C3AFBA carburetor, meaning it is a carburetor for a 1963 Galaxy. We had somebody say something the other day that we had the wrong carburetor on here. I've got the right carburetor because Ford also put a number that may be a little hard to see right here on the foot of the, the carburetor body. You'll see the C3AF right here. It won't have the BA on it usually. Some of them do, but this tells you that this is the correct tag and the correct base for that Galaxy that we pulled it off of. One of the guys said that you can tell it's not the correct carburetor because of the accelerator pump on the front of it. I don't know, bud. The numbers are all there. <laughs> what are you going to do? All right, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and start disassembling this thing and pulling parts off of it and setting them aside so that we can clean them up and bring them back into place. All right, well, I'm going to quit talking and start working here. I'm going to take the, uh, I've already got the center stalk out of it. Uh, I'm going to pull out one of these and see which one's correct. This is the brand new one we got from NPD. That is the correct center stalk for this one. It's the longer one. And the cool thing is, is this kit from AMK even comes with the correct air cleaner nut that comes with it. So basically you can get all this and pull it together and make all that look correct on your car. All right, there are on the Autolite 2100 screws here and screws here to remove the top plate. You also have this piece here, which is gonna have to be brought around and I'll show you that in just a second. I'm going to pull these off and set this tag aside. Don't want to lose that if you're keeping it because we're probably going to get rid of this carburetor after we're done. Because you know we're putting this engine that's in that car in Logan's Ranchero and he's going to want a four barrel. A manly four barrel. I told him it was for better gas mileage. We're going to tell his mom that too. Screws aside, put all of them in the same spot so you can keep up with them. Top comes off. Oh, this one's already popped loose. That's nice. 
All right, I'm gonna set this aside. I'm gonna pull the gasket off, which is going to go in the trash. Mmm, this thing has been sitting a minute. All right, now, the float systems on these, this one's got the original uh, brass float. That would be correct for this carburetor. There is a clip that holds this all in here. You can see dust flying off. That's from the gas that was in this thing. There we go. Now this is your float system, and there is your needle and seat. And whatever you do, try not to lose this stuff for now. So you know exactly what's in your kit, don't lose these little parts. And there's also a spring off to one side. This spring actually maintains depth and position for the, uh, the actual float itself. I'm just gonna leave all of this assembled. I'm not gonna take it apart for right now. Float on this one looks like it would probably float. It looks like it would be okay. It could be reused, but I'm not gonna risk it. I'll probably put one of the two brand new floats in here and reuse those. Spring just came off, I'll set it aside. We'll set the float over here as well. Um, now I'm gonna go get, I've got, <laughs> there is a, there's a dead bug in the, in the bowl of our carburetor. I've been doing this for like, I don't know, 40 years, and I, I've never seen a dead bug in a bowl of a carburetor before, ever, ever, like never, ever, ever. All right, now I think I figured this out. These carburetors actually have a vent hole, which is pretty substantial in size, right up on top of the carburetor. And if I take this, this is the bottom side of the gasket. You can see dirt and stuff around here where the vent hole is corresponding to that right there. So there's three places that they can get in. So that thing sat up long enough that a bug said, hey, that's a great place to stay. I'm going to make my house in there. Still kind of freaks me out. All right, now I have a special screwdriver that I use for taking jets out and the uh, discharge booster screw out of the center here because it's a pretty big slot on there and I don't want anything that's gonna be so small like the screwdriver I use to take everything off the top of it. This screwdriver is one that I modified from an old Craftsman that had a nick taken out of it. I shortened the blade up to make it wider and then I just narrowed it down on my grinder. This is good for removing jets. Mm, that jet is crusty. It does not want to come out. I'll have to put some penetrating oil on that one. Mm, that one popped loose. That's what it should do when it comes out is pop loose like that. All right, the reason you want to take those jets out is you can see the stuff that's down inside of there. That junk that's down in there is a problem. It's going gonna, it's gonna to loosen up when you put the ethanol fuels or even regular fuels in there, and then that's going to get into your fuel system. It's going to cause all kinds of problems with your possibly with your atomization. All right, so I've moved over here. i got my old man glasses on so I can see what kind of damage I'm doing down in the hole. This jet will want to be replaced because of that, and I'll probably do both of them. If you do one jet, you should do two. Um, I don't like having to do that, but it looks like we're going to be stuck in that position here with this one. These are brass jets and aluminum. Ah, I was getting a little worried. Now you can see what happened to it, just trying to spin it out. That jet's wrecked. I don't like these being like this with little problems on them, like these little tips and things from where I, I messed the jet up coming out. Um, it's going to change the flow of that jet some, and I don't want one side to be different than the other. All right, I finally went and grabbed some steel wool and rubbed around on it a little bit, and I found the 47. It is facing the opening side of the jet. You can just barely make the 47 out on that jet. So we got a pair of 47s. We'll put a pair of 47s back into it from the guys at National Parts Depot, and we'll be good to go on that. All right, so we pulled the jets out, and I'm going to go in and take the discharge boosters off of here. If you're lucky, this is all one assembly, and they've never been messed with because I'm going to show you something in just a second here to let you know that these are specific to your particular car. You'll notice there's passages, and there's a hollow spot in the bottom of this, and there's passages in here. This is your main fuel feed for your boosters. 
Now this is your booster assembly. I'm going to set that right there. And you can see that there is a letter designation here. I don't know if this one has another one on it. Yes, a, this is an 8W9. These are specific to particular carburetor systems. You may have all of them that were for a Galaxy had this particular booster set up on it. There is no information that I know of out there. If you do know of the information, leave a comment in the section below to tell us where we can get to that because I'm going to try to compile something on these Autolite carburetors and pretty much all Ford carburetors on the internet. I'm going to put something on our web page that is uh, basically outlining all this stuff. But these booster assemblies are particular to certain types of carburetors. So you can't really do a lot of mixing and matching. And I've looked at these, like the 4100 Autolite that we have here at the shop that's on the, the 72 Ford pickup truck. It looks different than this one looks as far as the booster setups here. And these type of boosters are probably some of the best in the business for atomizing fuel. I really prefer an Autolite carburetor like this for the way it can handle fuel distribution and atomizing of the gas. So keep in mind that as long as your carburetor hasn't been messed with, this stuff right here is particular to your carburetor and you'll want to make sure that these boosters go back where they were originally. If you have a four barrel system, the back boosters need to go back into the back section of the carburetor and the front boosters into the front. I'll set these aside for right now. And there is a pin in here. This pin is part of the system for controlling the fuel inlet and there's also a check ball if I can get it to come out. There's your check ball. This check ball is in the center port right here on your carburetor. Don't lose this. This is specific to your car as well. It's really not super specific, but go try to find one. Just, you know, because you don't know what size it is. So just trust me, don't lose it. All right, for right now, that's everything I'm going to do up here. I'm going to start taking other things off the carburetor, doing other inspections. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the dash pot over here. I use this smaller screwdriver for this kind of stuff. Works pretty well for it. And sometimes these dash pots are like the other stuff, and they're a little hard to let go. I'll grab my hammer, see if I can pop it. If I can't, I'm just going to leave that on there for now and get it later. Sometimes popping it like that will jar it. and It'll make it where it'll break loose. Mm -mm. I'm not going to do any more because if I do, I may screw up that screw. All right, I'm going to flip it on its uh, back like this. Now you can look at this carburetor and see that we've got an issue here. It probably had an issue with the accelerator pump. That's what this system is here, this lever. And this right here is your accelerator pump on a 2100. You can see the darkness around here that's leaked all the way down onto the power valve box here. That tells me that the accelerator pump diaphragm is probably damaged or just cracked up a little bit, so it's, it's leaking fuel. And that may be what stopped this carburetor in its tracks at one point. So I'm going to go ahead and try to take this off. These usually aren't too bad for removal. I'm going to put my accelerator pump and stuff over here with the carburetor top. Now on your accelerator pump system, there are things I'm going to show you on the side here in just a second. This controls the amount of fuel, like if you're going into a hard acceleration, this will dump fuel into the carburetor so that it has enough gas for you to be able to accelerate away and not have a dead spot in the system. If you develop a dead spot, you've probably got an accelerator pump issue on the carburetor you're working with. Sometimes these will stick. And I'm going to take and set that up for right now. And I'm going to go here. You'll see that there are four different positions here. Typically on most Autolite 2100s, your, your second from the top position is going to be where you're going to put this. The higher up you go, the more pump you get from it. It doesn't mean the car is going to perform any better if you go to the top position. You may induce a problem with it wanting to bog a little bit if you go too high and put too much gas into the engine and plus what will probably more likely happen is your gas mileage will just go to crap. Pull this out. Put my clip over here because I don't want to lose that. That's probably something that is not going to be in a kit. 
You can flip this over and you can see the little tab on here. See it right here? You can take that. If you want to take this apart, you can take that out of there. There we go. Because I want to eventually take this and try to make sure that this has got really good movement on it. It's a little bit sticky and you want it to be nice and loose. So that's something we'll work on before next week. And a rod, we're not going to mess with that at all. Now, this is why I bought the other accelerator pump. Go ahead and bring that in here. There are two different types on these. You have the small button pump, and then you have the large button pump. And this one has the large button on it. And you can also see it has a lovely amount of what looks like possibly spider eggs. This thing is really nasty. So this will need to be replaced with the one that we already have. And you can see, here, if you listen, it's really crusty. This would not push fuel. It would just throw it outside, out to the bottom of the uh, accelerator pump because this just dried out really bad. A lot of times on these carburetors, you can just take and replace the accelerator pump and get away with it. Um, but this one, I would have to go in and do something to it because, as you can see, there's a bunch of trash and this has just dried up uh, residuals out of the fuel. There's a bunch of trash in the bottom of this one, so that would be a problem. But I will want to go in and clean all that stuff out of it. And I'll probably go in and take this off with my larger format screwdriver, just so I can get a look down in there. Luckily it came right out. Yeah, see this will pop out eventually. Honestly, this is the first time I've worked with one like this. Uh, usually the later carburetors don't have this assembly on them. And now I can probably get that check ball out. And I'm going to put the check ball over here with the part. And yes, this is just part of the casting. Okay, So I'm going to flip it on its base and you'll see also there's a lot of gasoline residue on the power valve. And after I pull this off, I'm going to go over power valves just a little bit. Power valve right here. Now this is, um, I will pull this one off in just a second. It requires a one inch uh, wrench to take this off. But what I'm going to talk about real quickly here is actually power valves and what power valves are for on your car. If you have a Holley carburetor or a Ford Autolite carburetor, Ford and Holley both use power valves. There's a number on the power valve, it's a 7 or it's an 8 or it's a 6.5. And, and what that really means is that it's opening up at 6.5 inches of vacuum. The higher the number, the closer it is to idle vacuum that you're opening up. Most of the time in the aftermarket kits, as I said before, the power valve that they supply is a seven and Ford actually used an eight, which means you're getting a little bit more of a power shot of fuel that will help the car not run as lean than if you use the stock one that comes with the kit. So if you're getting a kit for one of these, go ahead and order the number eight power valve that you can get from the guys at National Parts Depot, put that sucker in there and then you should be good to go on performance. I'm going to try to pull this one out and show you uh, where the numbers typically are on these power valves. Alright, so I use a one inch wrench to take these off. It's a lot better than using an adjustable, which a lot of guys will do. What I find on these Autolites is if you're using an adjustable, the head of it's just too big and it gets in the way of the idle adjustment screws here. I'm going to pull this one off, see what we got. We will not be reusing this. Now, on some of these early ones, and I have to put my old man glasses on to look at it, the early ones, a lot of times, they may be marked on the sides here. A lot of times it's marked on the flats or between the flats as to what power valve it is. So I'm going to grab my knife and see if there's something on the end of it. Because sometimes Ford or Holly will mark them on the end of the power valve. Seven and a half. So this one was marked on the butt of it, the brand new one. It's actually marked on the face on this side of it, 
which on these faces obviously up. Um, but it's, they're marked all over the joint. I've seen them marked on the outside perimeter here. I've seen them marked inside of this uh, kerf. I've seen them marked on the actual plunger. But this one is a seven and a half, which I would rather see an eight or an eight and a half, just to give you a little more push on fuel whenever you're running. This is the one we're gonna to use to replace this one when we go back in and redo the carburetor. All right, well that's trash. We'll put that up here. Um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the jets out of it to see these are your idle adjustment screws. Now what I mean by that is these are your metering screws for this carburetor. And what you're really looking for is to make sure that there's no marks or um, indentions on here where the screw has been turned in too deep. This one is in, these are actually in incredibly good shape. They are available, like I said, from National Parts Depot, but these, this one at least is in really good shape. I have seen these in such bad shape before, it's not even funny. This one is a little more questionable, but it's actually not in bad shape. It's just junk on it. All right, so if you are going to do this, you'll want to pull these out, and you'll see I'm running my fingernail across the, um, the metering jet here, or the metering screw here. And I'm not seeing anything that's catching my fingernail, so we would go in and reuse these. I'm going to go ahead and pull the other one out. If you didn't, like I said, you can get them from the guys at National Parts Depot. Those are there. Um, we are about as far down as you're going to take one of these carburetors with the exception, exception of doing the cleaning inside of the bowl area and all that because there's, like I said, there's the bug and everything is still, he just doesn't want to leave. He likes it in there. There he is. There's our bug. <laughs> still kind of floored by that. Uh, the only other thing you could probably want to talk about would be the choke system on here. We're going to pull it apart so we can take a look at that and just make sure, because this is going to need to come off to be cleaned up anyway. So I'm just going to take these screws out. A lot of this stuff can be taken apart and sent off to be plated if you want to do that sort of thing to it. I'm not going to. I'm just going to clean it up. I'll probably put some kind of rust inhibitor on it and then be done with it. This is, I believe, what I, they call a hot air choke because it does it has the air off of the exhaust manifold. It's pulling from there for heat to show that the engine has come up to full operating temperature. Pretty prevalent on the early Mustangs and Falcons and Galaxies. You can also convert these into an electric choke as well. Okay. I knew I'd find it. All right. I'm going to go ahead and pull this apart then so you can see what I'm talking about because it is kind of important. If we're lucky, I'll send this clip out into the crew. <laughs> it's just an E-clip. It's kind of problematic because it's actually on a piece of plastic and some of this stuff is not available right now. There we go. And there's your E-clip for that. And then the choke assembly just pops right off. Uh, for now, I'm going to put the E-clip back on here so I don't lose it. And what I wanted to show you is that this is actually a controlled vacuum leak. If you go to an electric choke, and there's a bunch of places that are selling electric chokes for these because it is something that's pretty easy to do, you're going to need to plug that off, and a lot of them will sell you a kit that'll do that. This port that is down below the screw here, that port goes directly into the underside of the carburetor, and it's basically, it's pulling vacuum from that to help pull hot air into the choke. So that's how the hot air chokes on these work. Um, boy, there's not a whole lot more I can do. This is going to have to be something I'm going to worry out, possibly with heat and a little bit of penetrating oil. Uh, but right now, we're at a spot where we would have to start going in and doing the cleanup. And I'm going to save the cleanup and redo for next week because I am going to probably soak this thing in some cleaning fluid and just go through and really clean it up before I start doing the actual clean out of the carburetor and reassembly. Because this fuel bowl is really dirty. Now, why am I doing this? Well, I want to actually go back in and use this carburetor, which is original to the car, on that 289, change the oil in it, 
and use our electric fuel pump to see if we can actually get it to run and idle so we can check that Ford Matic to make sure if it is or isn't going to run. So that's basically it for this week. Why don't you check out the Patreon account. If we've ever done anything helping you with this stuff and saved you some money on your car, maybe you'll think about putting a little bit of money toward the Patreon account. It doesn't do anything to benefit me. It actually goes to benefit uh, Andrew, who is my assistant and the guy who comes in here and helps me do the video production during the week. So you're not doing me any favors. You're keeping him off the street. Anyway, uh, it would help him and it helps us help him. So if you want to do that, please do check it out and go out and take a look at it. The people that have been running up beside me over here or maybe over here, I never know where Andrew's going to throw the thing. Uh, those folks are the ones who put their money where their mouth is and they're helping us on a monthly basis. The guys at the $10 a month level are actually getting meetings with me once a month on Zoom. It is a lot of fun. Please check it out. Also, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. We're on our march to 100,000 subscribers and we're getting danger close. We're at 97,526. Not that I'm counting. And we're trying to get all the way up to the 100 mark for Christmas. Will we make it? Absolutely not, but it's worth a shot. If you could find somebody like, I don't know, the guys over at Roadkill or or maybe Cletus McFarland or some other car channel that's way bigger than we are that could throw those folks at us so that we can make it by Christmas, that would be great. We'll see how tight this car community really is. Finally, folks, be kind to each other, treat each other nice, have a great week, and we'll see you next time on Auto Resto Mod. I gotta put it all back together. I mean, I know how to do it, it's not that it's that hard. I just gotta get the gooey stuff and the... the I look at Logan and go, looks like we're putting the 260 in. Let's hope it doesn't go.